dance for joy or lust or anger in it. So welcome to Slightly Shambola Guess MMT Review, the series where we take a brand new car here at the SMMT test day at uh, Froxton Circuit in Hampshire and um, I have just 30 minutes to film the entire video and it all goes horribly wrong. This is a 2024 MG HS 1.5 plug-in hybrid trophy. But is it any good? Should you care? Let's find out, shall we? So, I've just driven, literally earlier this morning, a BYD CLU, also a plug-in hybrid, which also costs about the same money as this. This, uh, this trophy model costs in a region of £33,000, as does the base model Boost um, BYD CLU. Thank you, speed limit warning thing going off. This particular car has a lot of power. Have you ever previous car had a fair bit? I think it was about 260 horsepower. This plug-in hybrid version has 307 horsepower which is totally insane to me. 0 to 60 is something like kind of six or seven seconds in this. Do forgive me if, uh, you know, it seems like um, some of the information in this video is a little bit sort of inaccurate. Um, <laughs> I'm one of the very first people outside of the press launch of MG UK staff to actually drive this, so the information on this car is not particularly forthcoming. Um, my friend Mr. Quirk from Planet Auto, along with his lady wife, actually drove the um, seven-speed automatic at HS recently, but there's very, very few other people who have had a go in this, and so, you know, there's not much for me to refer to up there at the moment. The car feels completely different than the old model. I actually drove a 2023 HS um, seven-speed um, automatic the other day, um, and that video is already on the channel. But This is completely different. The engine apparently on the normal ones that don't have a plug-in hybrid system now generates 169 horsepower, not 163. One thing I, I'm realising straight away with this car is just how quiet it is. It's, it's really quiet. But I am missing the fact that a lot of the things I want to play with, like the mode selector and the re regen braking switch, they're not around here anymore. They're somewhere in this enormous central touchscreen, which is the sort of fashion these days of things like this. And that's absolutely fun. But I want to change things. And I don't know if someone's actually kind of mapped these two these, um, soft keys on the steering wheel or not. I'm not actually sure. I'll give it a go and see what happens. Um, that is the lane keeping assist type thing. Uh, let's see if this button does anything. One of the things I've, I've noted that people have said about this car when they've driven it is the um, safety systems are very, very intrusive. And, it, and um, <laughs> when I'm looking down and, and sort of trying to work out what's going on, it's completely focused on driving. Well, I am focusing on driving. I, I have my head sort of there, and occasionally I turn my head to look at the camera. But I used to look down and fiddle with this touchscreen to operate some of the controls. And there's so many things on here that I don't quite know sort of what to do. I think I'm going to have to just move my eyes away and probably give me a warning for having a look at the screen. Um, right, regen braking high, power source EV or, high or hybrid. Okay, can we go in sport mode? Sport mode, oh my gosh, help. Um, let's go down to comfort mode. Oh, that's better, that's much better, better. Um, so I've got the, I want the regen on high. For some reason, you put it into comfort mode, it puts your regen braking on low. And obviously, you know, plug-in hybrid like this, you want to recoup the energy and, you know, I've only got one mile of battery, so people have clearly been flooring this around and not driving it at all. How are you supposed to drive a plug-in hybrid, which is you're supposed to maximise the amount of electric range you do. In fact, this car will do 75 miles on electric power alone. Which is, which is crazy to me. Like with the old cars, about 30 miles. So a big improvement in that respect, but people who've been driving this just have not been, how, how we say, kind of, um, you know, driving it how you're supposed to get the maximum fuel economy from it.
right view. For some reason, the lights have stayed on in the car, uh, but that's okay. It's completely different exterior and interior design from the previous Model HS. Um, I think the ignition might still be on. It's been out quite a few times today before I got it out, so apologies. It's, uh, it's not very clean. Yeah, it's bigger car inside apparently. The footprint looks slightly larger as well to me. So we'll uh, open up the boot if we can. There we go, electric tailgate on this model. So, boot capacity is now about 507 litres apparently or something like that. I could be wrong, that might just be the petrol one because we've got all these plug-in hybrid batteries under here so obviously you've got space for cables and things like that in here. Um, I prefer to see a spare wheel but that's just not the way it goes these days with modern plug-in hybrids and things like that. It is quite dark in here. One thing I'd like to see and was available on the uh, pre-facelift HS before was a big panoramic sunroof. You don't get that anymore on these. And that's a real shame because the cabin feels quite dark actually. So yeah, electric tailgate, um, LED light bar, parking sensors, reversing camera, all that sort of stuff. 360 surround cameras as well. So we'll just turn all this off because I don't like it beeping at me. Buttons down there. All right. Okay. That's better. More beeps. So, yeah, keyless entry, of course. The other thing I'm really appreciative of, actually, is the fact that on a day like today in particular, the uh, sills are covered. You don't get your trousers mucky like you do in something like a P38 Range Rover. So we've got a little climate vent in the back of here. That's, that's nice. Big, big, big door bins. And soft touch material on the top of there. Let's just shut this door. Wow, it's really rainy now. Um, but it's nice and nice and comfortable in here. We've got LED lights in the back. We've got privacy glass. Excellent. We've got a um, a nice armrest and cut polish. That feels good. This sort of leatherette fabric with the sort of orange stitching is is nice. Um, yeah, it's a nice place to shelter from the elements. And there's lots and lots and lots of space. The previous HS is a very spacious car, but this feels even larger, if anything. Um, it is absolutely huge in here. So yeah, plenty of room for all family. You could probably get three people abreast in here quite comfortably as well. Um, filling child seats wouldn't be a problem or anything like that. One thing I have noticed though, the boot height doesn't seem particularly tall. The sort of, you know, more sloping roof line it's to, to have now. But yeah, just a, a big improvement in many, many areas. Although the interior quality, to be honest, of the previous HS wasn't bad at all, really. That wasn't the problem. Okay, so let's get in the front quickly before I get absolutely drenched. One thing we do have now is, is even more kind of responsive touchscreens. Um, they're sort of more um, kind of landscape style um, than the, the previous ones were a bit more sort of upright. So if we switch it on, we can just do it by pressing this button here. Here we go. We haven't started it up or anything. We don't need to. But there we go, MG, um, the wipers have come on. I mean, I mean um, presumably we're ready to go if I want to. We're in the normal mode. Um, we'll go back to the screen here that, are, that uh, um, I think I've been talking about. So this is the main screen you're gonna to want to operate when you're driving along. We've got comfort, normal and sport, regen braking low and high, power source, hybrid system. We could go on to EV, but I don't think I've got any EV power left. Um, yeah, I've got one mile of battery, so you won't do that. Um, regen braking, put it on low, does that go to one? Yeah, there's only two modes of regen braking. Um, but all sorts of things, convenience modes, drive position, memory, which is nice, easy entry and exit, I presume that moves the steering wheel as well. Front fog lamps, rear fog lamps. Why are the fog lamps in this menu? Surely there should be a button for those somewhere. Maybe I'm just old fashioned views, or perhaps that's uh, that's a problem, I don't know. Um, MG Pilot, the safety suite was introduced with the ZSCV in 2019. Um, we've got driving assist, uh, speed limit recognition, overspeed, front collision assist, um, lane departure assist, you've got everything. Rear cross traffic alert, and blind spot detection, and door opening warns, rear collision warning, drive fatigue warning. I would turn that off if I were. I think I will turn that off because I don't like it. Driver distraction monitoring, turn that off. Oh, don't want any of that stuff. Wonderful. Uh, the cluster. 
Um, wow, we've got, this is the instrument cluster here. We've got intelligent drive. We can just adjust it there. We've got um, speed theme. What on earth is a the speed theme? Is it like a speed racer or something? Uh, energy flow, obviously plug-in hybrid. So um, the, uh, the battery to uh, the wheels at the front. I think it's only a front wheel drive. I don't think it's an all wheel drive one, this. Um, and we've got 360 cameras. There we go. That's the front camera. Um, I presume we can sort of switch between if we want to. There's a the camera at the back. There's a the camera at the side. And that side too. Fantastic. Back to the front. Um, and get off here. Yeah, it's it's a nice screen. It's both the screens are nice. Um, I presume you can sort of toggle through some of the menus here with some of these buttons here. Um, I'll have to have a play with this because I just haven't haven't really got an awful lot of time just to go through and everything. There we go. Yes, yeah, so you can you can go through various modes on here. There's the trip computer um, and everything like that. I'm sure you know you've seen things like that before. Down here we've got two USB ports, which is good for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and then charging on that side. Here's the gear selector. The pop button's completely different from the rest of the gear selector for some reason. Hill descent control, auto stop start. I think this is a uh, wireless charging pad, big old centre console in there, so a massive sort of place there for storing things. Then we go on to the favourite test when driving any MG, got my MG branded secret mission documents here, and see if we can get them in them. I hope so, viewers. A car like this, I would very much hope so. Yes! Finally! Amazing. That's good, isn't it, viewers? So we've got all sorts of complicated things here and little sort of controls. We can, I think, map certain things too here. And that, that one is sort of low and high for something. <laughs> Whatever that is. I'm not actually sure it just says low and high. Someone's already mapped a control or something. And I think there's another one on this side, but you can presumably go sport mode. Oh, there's the driving modes. There they are. So actually, this is the... Uh, so this has been mapped to the um, regen braking, that's much drama. Someone's been sensible, but I didn't really work that out when I was driving earlier on. Um, tire pressure monitoring, fantastic. Just all the gizmos and gadgets that you'd ever need in your life. Just everything. There's the heat ventilation, dual zone climate control and heated seats and everything else. Navigation is just sort of there for, fr for Fruxton. And then this is for the um, uh, music. We haven't got any music at the moment, we're not connected to anything. Uh, right, uh, 426 miles, that's good. These, I think, are out of an MG4. They're not the same as a previous car. Neither of these controls here, they are all new, um, which is good. I, I'm trying to spot a single bit of interior on here. The only thing I think is this 12-volt socket cover and possibly the USB ports, but everything else is new. Um, soft touch material here. Uh, soft touch material here, that's good. Frameless mirror. It's just a shame we don't have the um, panoramic sunroof that we used to have um on these cars and that's a, that's a bit wobbly for some reason that's that's not very good is it i suppose you could put stuff in the door but they're huge right uh let's open up the bonnet viewers and um see what lies beneath just notice we've got two flaps on this car one is for the fuel and one is for charging port i think that's the way around it is um I, what i'll do is i'll just Pull the, the switch or something like that to here, um, press that, and see what's opened up. Yes, that's a charging port. Okay, um, does that mean I can use this as well? Yes, it releases both. That's useful to know, isn't it? Right, let's open the bonnet then. Pull twice, okay. Hopefully I can do this with one hand. Oh, it's wet out here today, viewers. There we go. So it's a 1.5 four-cylinder turbo engine with 169 horsepower plus the electric motor. The combined total is 307 horsepower. Two um, coolant reservoirs in here. Now, these cars do come with a seven-year, 80,000-mile warranty, so hopefully you won't be under here too much. It is quite complicated under here. I wouldn't want to try to do any servicing myself in here. Of course, you don't have to. Um, for a while anyway. New front end is good. We've got obviously the front camera and the front parking sensor you need on a big old car like this. Um, yeah. It is quite impressive this. It is a lot better than the previous car. That wasn't that bad when it came out in 2019 but you know things have moved on and this is now 
well, it's uh, just an improvement in virtually every area. Let's go out and have another drive. I'm actually very impressed with this way the car drives in comparison to the predecessor. The um, previous HS, particularly the petrol model, not so much this plug-in hybrid, it's heavier, but the petrol model, it's one of the only cars, modern cars, that pitches and rolls. I mean, the uh, BYD CLU does as well. This is better. Unfortunately, my notes have flown off the dash, so I don't think necessarily we're going to be referring to those anymore. We're just going to have to see how it goes. So comfort mode round the roundabout. Um, steering is a bit light. Let's put it in sport. Do we have more weight? Oh, yes, that's better. It feels sort of poised and ready to go now. Let's, we've got a Lotus Electro behind me. Let's see if we can get away from the Lotus Electro views um, in this plug-in hybrid with 307 horsepower. Um, yes, is the answer to that. Um, maximum regen. We might, electronic switch control is on because it's raining. Um, yeah, the regen braking is working really well. Someone just pulled out in front of me out of a junction, so we're okay. Let's go back into normal. Yeah, once you've got it on this screen, but the thing is, like, if I want to change anything else, like the climate control and stuff like that, they've actually taken away the buttons to, to move the fan speed as well. You can turn the reading your window on and off, you can turn the um, maxi Z window on and off, but one thing you can't do is actually operating the climate control without moving around somewhere else. And you've got a, there's a, there's a row of um, sort of um, shortcut things here, the touch buttons that allow you to go to various bits like the menu view and the uh, climate control, but there's no physical button for this. And I don't like this expensive button plug particularly in the way that it is. The initial drive today is good. You've actually got the navigation and the drive in front of it. Someone previously uh, put in the directions to get um, to get back from um, wherever they're going to the front of the circuit. And that's good, although I'd be using Apple CarPlay around Android also. I'm very pleased with your traffic lights and wipers are working well with you. The mirrors in this car are comically large as well, so hopefully that helps. The rear visibility doesn't seem to be much car. But yeah, the ride and handling is much, much better. My like, comparison with the B1E CLU, the cost the same as this, on the same road, it's so much better. Um, it's so much better than the old car. Um, so much better, even though I'm in normal mode. I mean, I could put it in comfort and I'm steering even light if I wanted to, but it's actually a revelation. It doesn't cost that much more than the old plug-in hybrid of life. That was like 31 32 In fact, the SE model starts at 31000 pounds of plug-in hybrid. Um, it's um, actually a situation where I'm going to use the physical button to clear for windscreen, I think, uh, which is good, but windscreen is currently clear and it's hard to see. Um, there we go, fans are on. I'll turn it on for a second. That's worked very well. Good for us to put that in. Anyway, that's good. Yeah, so uh, an improvement to drive on the BYD CLE, which is uh, again a brand new competitor for it, has just come out. And um, yeah, it's very comfortable. The seat um, is um, is good. I am um, very impressed, really. Um, I think this is actually a vast improvement over the previous car. But I'm now getting warnings of focusing on driving, even though my head is forward and I, I'm looking at the road. Shut up, please! Oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear viewers. There's so much more to say, really, about this car um, that I just haven't really had the chance to uh, talk about. Um, I don't really have much time to do that. Um, but this trophy model, we've got front sensors, power folding mirrors, uh, leather style upholstery. I really would like the optional tan leather interior. That'd be far more sort of me than this very dark interior. Particularly, we don't have a sunroof anymore available on VHS, which is a shame. Um, but yeah, you've got the powered tailgate as well, which is which is good. Um, and uh, you get all sorts of equipment. We've looked at the safety stuff. There's so much in here. But that driver fatigue system thing, it, ugh, that's coming off if I ever drive one of these again. 
But uh, yeah, a great improvement over the previous model. So um, should you buy one of these cars, do you? Is it, this model's about 30, I think 34,000 pounds, it says in my notes here. Um, I don't see why not, actually. The plug-in hybrid version of the Kia Sportage is like 40,000 pounds. The only thing is I would I would just try um, the BYD Seal U as well, because that's about the same money as one of these. But this is a lot better to drive. Um, it doesn't have a fancy kind of rotating touchscreen in the middle of this car, but it has all sorts of other things. And just see which which you prefer. Um, I prefer this in a way because it's better to drive, but the uh, the, the Seal U is impressive as well. Um, there's a hopefully a balanced conclusion for you. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment below, and we shall see you again very soon for some more slightly shambolic SMMT reviews.